Last week I did a little video talking about PDF readers, and I mentioned that I use the program Zathura, which a lot of people asked about, I guess a lot of people don't know about. It is a minimalist and Vim-based PDF reader. Uh, so I figured I'd do a video on it just because a lot of people asked. I mean, you could just read the manual, but if people just read the manual, there wouldn't be any reason for me to showcase things. So we might as well do it. So Zathura, before I even show you the program, just know that it is a such a minimalist program that is as by default, it's actually just a shell that can't really read anything. So in order for the Zathura program to actually be able to read files, you have to install some little sub-modules with it. Now I'm on Arch, so on Arch, you know, the, the different uh, programs or the different packages, I should say, that it comes in is you're gonna wanna install Zathura. I presume you wanna be able to read PDFs, so you should install Zathura PDF Poplar or Zathura PDF Emu PDF. Those will enable Zathura to actually read PDFs. And you can also have other modules. So you can, if you want to be able to read Deja Vu files, which I do, I have Zathura's Deja Vu or Zathura PS for PostScript files. And you can actually check your repositories. There are going to be other modules as well. One annoying thing about a lot of PDF readers is that they only read PDFs, but Zathura can read a whole bunch of things because it's built as being kind of module modular. So you have Zathura CB for reading comic books. Um, there's an EPUB reader, I think, up here somewhere. I probably can't see it, but uh, yeah, it's definitely up there. Um, so yeah. Um, so there are different modules you can give it, and just know that when you install it, you should make sure you have some of these installed so it can actually read files. That's the point. But um, it is a highly minimalist, very responsive, uh, very useful PDF reader. Let's get into how this thing actually works. So I'm going to open up PDF. Uh, here we have one here. It is phonological movement in classical Greek. Now, it works pretty much as you would expect. I'm going to turn on my key bindings first. So uh, if you want to move up and down in a document J and K, just like in Vim, you can zoom in with plus, you can zoom out with minus, uh, you can press equal to get back to 100% zoom. Uh, notice also when you're zoomed in or whatever, uh, you can press H or L to move left and right pretty much as you would expect in Vim. Now, one of the common things you might want to do with a PDF is print things out. Now, to issue commands to Zithura, it comes with a bunch of commands. You can read them all in the manual, but one you might want to use quite a, a great deal is print. So I'm going to type colon, and that brings up a little command line. You probably can't see it because it's so small, but I can type in print, press enter, and it will give you your print menu so you can decide how to print this document or whatever. So again, the basic bindings move up and down, um, uh, zoom in and out with minus and plus and stuff like that. Now, uh, additionally, I should, actually I should show you this because um, this PDF doesn't have it. Some PDFs will of course have links in them. So this has a link here, this has a link there. Um, to follow a link in Zathura, you just type in F. So F will bring up, it will number all your links. So this one's two, this one's four, this one's three, whatever. And I can say, let's say I wanna to go to sciencedirect.com, I can just type in three and enter. Again, this is supposed to be a totally keyboard-based um, uh, PDF re or general document reader. You can use your mouse, but there are shortcuts for doing all the stuff you know that you would do with your mouse. So here we can see this, this nice little link came up. Um, so again, you can follow links and stuff like that. Now I'm gonna show you my configuration for Zithura, uh, my config file, now, which by default, oops, um, by default, the config file is going to be in uh, config Zathura, Zathura RC. Now you can see I've added a couple things in here. Um, I got rid of the padding, the horizontal padding and the vertical padding to documents because by default I think they come with a little uh, padding on the side or whatever. Uh, this page padding here, that is how many pixels separate different pages. So this little separation here, if you want it to be bigger, uh, you can have it do that by putting, you know, putting in a larger amount. I also remap a bunch of keys just to make them a little more to my liking, I guess. Uh, I mentioned that zoom in is plus and minus. I prefer that to be capital K and capital J Vim keys so they're nice and accessible. So I've moved those here. Uh, I can still press plus and minus. Uh, recolor, by default, uh, you have a nice little night mode in Zathura, and you can get to that with Control R. So Control R toggles that. I've remapped it to I as well because I just prefer that. If you've used MUPDF, that's the binding for that. 
So that's very convenient when you're reading at night. Um, I've mapped print to P, just so I don't even have to type in the command, I just pre press P. Although, as you can see, I don't really have any printers on this uh, computer. And uh, additionally, so uh, I've remapped U and D to move up half of a page or down half of a page. By default, they're Control U contr and Control D, just like in Vim, but I don't like typing Control. I don't feel it's necessary. Although, one thing about that, by default, there's a, uh, let me show you, by default, there is a page mode mode where you can get dual pages. I've remapped this to capital D. By default, it's D, uh, but I've remapped it since I'm using D for something else, but I find it just as easy. So for some screens, this might help. Again, by default, the binding is D. I've remapped it on my configs to capital D. Um, and there are other things like, uh, you know, rotate. I haven't mapped to capital R. I think it's lowercase r by default. Um, but you can rotate documents if you need to, if you download a PDF of a map or something like that. That's something that I often find I need to use. So it's very convenient. You have a bunch of other stuff and you can check, of course, the manual page for the other things or the manual of Zathura RC. And this will give you a, you know, how to set different variables, how to map different things. Now, one thing, well, it lists out all the commands you can, you know, uh, map or whatever, of course, as you would expect a man page to do. Now, one thing I don't really use but is available in Zathura is uh, different modes for, um, well, it can be modal in the same way that Vim is modal. So you can have things like, um, I, don't, I don't think it's in the RC file, but it's just in the default. Um, yeah, so by default, there are some, a bunch of bindings, of course, and you can activate a full screen mode by typing F11. And then that, that has slightly different bindings, or you can have presentation mode with F5. Um, and that has slightly different bindings as well. Now, I don't use these. Um, you might find them useful. You can you, you, you can put in custom bindings for all of these. It's very nice. I just don't happen to use them. Um, if I want to full screen something, I'll full screen it with my i3 binding and I don't mind using the same, uh, you know, the same, I guess, keyboard shortcuts for it. Um, other things, uh, other nice little Vimisms, I guess. Let's say I want to bookmark a page. Let's say, uh, you know, there's this nice little uh, paragraph here that I really like. Um, so let's say I want to bookmark this. In the same way that you can bookmark a certain line in Vim, you can use M to mark, and then I'm going to mark this with O. O because, I don't know, it says one kind of evidence. Let's say I want to mark this paragraph. So if I'm in another portion of the document. Let's say I press GG to go to the top. Of course, Vim bindings GG to go to the top, capital G to go to the bottom. Um, if I'm in, at another portion of the document, I can type in uh, quotation mark and then O, and that will return to the place that I marked. Just like in Vim, you can mark lines with M and go back to them with quotation mark. So that's very helpful if you want to move around a document very quickly. I don't think I said it before, but you can barely see it down here because you know my, my settings have it so small. You do have your page number in the bottom right. Notice that this particular document, it has three out of five because there are three out of five PDF pages, or two out of five now that we've gone up. And there's also the real number of the PDF page if you have that kind of metadata, which is right here. Oh, and notice also I'm, I'm sort of highlighting things. If you actually go over text and select it, you'll say that it, uh, it'll say that it actually selected that text to your primary uh, selection. So that means if I go somewhere, you know, I can paste it in with the middle mouse button or something like that, which isn't very useful in the terminal, but you know, this can be very useful to copy things and stuff like that. Now I think I've pretty much gone over most of it. There's one additional thing that I find very, uh, I find very helpful about Zathura, and that is Zathura can read content from the standard input. Now what I mean by that, now if you've watched my, uh, let's see, if you watch my recent videos on Groff, uh, here's a little graph file I have. Now, if I want to compile this, let me get rid of these shortcuts. If I want to compile this, one thing you can do, let's say, um, this is just, you know, the syntax to compile a graph document. Take this document, I'm going to output it to a PDF. By default, that's going to output to standard output. Um, one nice thing about Zathura is I can actually just pipe that directly into it. And you have it read, you have hyphen for reading standard input. So if I run this, 
Zathura is going to pop up. It's not reading a file that actually exists. Instead, it's reading that standard input. You can actually see down here, it's reading temp Zathura standard input. Um, so that's very nice if you just want to have a, if you don't want to have a, a PDF as a file, but you just want to pre preview some PDF information. Now you might say, when do I actually use that? That doesn't seem very useful. I will say that I found a very nice implementation of this a second ago, or a second ago, a couple days ago. And that is, if you use my dot files, you know that one nice little thing I have is if you press um, super and then F1, it brings up this little help document that has a list of, a list of all the key bindings um, and you know a bunch of stuff that you can click on or, or I guess learn about or whatever. Um, so you can check one thing that I had in my GitHub repository is I wanted to have this document and constantly update it when I made changes to uh, you know, some key binding so this document was always updated. Now, originally what I was doing is continually pushing a PDF file to my Git repository, which is a big waste of space because that's a file that GIF, or, or GIF, um, uh, Git can't properly analyze. It's not going to be able to diff, you know, the differences between PDFs really. Um, so instead of doing that, I actually have, now I have just a readme file, which exists only in uh, as a graph text document, which is this thing right here. And what I have now is I have the binding of F1. Instead of create or instead of viewing a PDF that exists, it actually just immediately compiles this graph document and sends it to Zathura as standard input. Now, what that means is all I have to do is now change this document. And whenever a user presses that document on their file or their their own you know implementation of my dot files it brings up a pdf but this pdf isn't actually in the git repository it's actually just you know zathura is reading it as standard input so this is much more convenient for using with git because you don't have to worry about it uh, you know this is one of the reasons people use graph for you know doing man manuals and stuff like that because pretty much everyone has the ability to compile a graph document if you're using my you know larbs configuration you have it um, so this is a much more easy way of having a document that you can come sort of compile real time on people's computers so that's one really nice implementation. It's a good implementation of both Groff and Zathura's read standard input ability. Uh, and now I don't have to worry about having a PDF in my repository and constantly belly aching about how much size I'm going to be using whenever I push some minor change. And I have to redo the, you know, effectively rereads the entire PDF, which causes very bloated repositories. Um, all right, let me tack on one little thing that I forgot about, but this is something that might make or break the, the uh, program for some of you guys. One very nice feature about Zathura, despite the fact that it, is very, that it is very minimalist, it does have the ability to auto-update files. So if I compile this document and bring up a Zathura window for it, here's my nice little graph document. Uh, let's say I throw in another paragraph here. So here is another paragraph. And if I compile that, you'll notice that this new text appeared in the Zathura document. I do not have to, despite the fact that I did remap the reload key to R, if I press that, it will reload the file. But Zathura, regardless of that, is still monitoring the file that is open to check to see if there are changes, so it will auto-update. Now this, I think, is something that MUPDF does not do by default. I know that like Sumatra PDF on Windows will do this, but uh, this is just another little thing. And this can make or break, uh, well, it's really going to make um, a particular implementation or coding, not coding style, but, you know, uh, I guess document creation style you may have. So I just wanted to throw that in. I realized I forgot it in the original video. But anyway, so that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I find... Zathura is a good example of a program that is very, it's very small, but it's very manipulatable. As you can see, I had a pretty good implementation of it with Groff that makes, uh, makes doing something more complicated very simple, very elegant, so you don't have to worry about it. So I enjoy this program, and despite the fact that you can do a bunch of cool stuff with it, including a lot of stuff that I can't mention, but it's in the man, 
Um, it, it still is extremely easy to use and extremely easy to get out and just, even if you don't change anything about it, uh, it's still a very useful program. So anyway, I encourage you to try it. If you're on, I'm pretty sure it runs, I mean, it definitely runs on Linux and BSD or whatever, but I don't know if it runs on Windows or any of that. But either way, I, I don't know why you're using Windows or whatever. But anyway, so I'll see you guys next time. Hope you learned something and have a good one.